Hey there, Cheryl here. Welcome to the Limitless Leader live show. I am, today is just, I'm so excited I can't get it out. Today is a very special day. Really excited to have Susan Poser, who is VP Culture and Engagement at Oracle. Susan, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Oh, thanks so much, Cheryl. I am so excited to be here with you. So before we get into a lot of the amazing work that you're doing, how you got to your role, which is a lot about the topic that we're going to talk about today and how to speak up and be an advocate for yourself, I thought I'd ask a little bit about, you know, was there anything that transpired earlier in your life as a young person that either inspired you to greatness or maybe something that was difficult that you overcame or what sparked your interest in shaping you to where you are today? Well, you know, it's really funny. My very first job out of college, I went to work for a manufacturing company. I graduated with a degree in finance. I went to work for a manufacturing company um, and it was, my boss was a woman and she was the uh, finance leader. And then the accounting leader was also a woman and we had a male uh, secretary. And I thought, wow, this is great, right? And then shortly after that, everything changed. And I thought, you know, I thought, wow, things are really progressive. But then I realized after, I think I was only in that role for an, about a year and then things changed and it kind of reset to what we would normally see, right? A lot of men in different roles and, and very few women. And I think that's when I kind of realized, gosh, there's such a huge opportunity to really, you know, create more visibility and leadership in women in these types of roles, because, you know, I thought it was so cool. And I thought that's how the world was. And, you know, because that was my first job out of college. I thought, wow, this is how the world is. It's so wonderful that I found out that's not the case. I mean, one of my first jobs at Oracle, it was, I think the leadership team was all men except for me. And then as we grew, I think in our first 50 people, there were all men except three women. And I always laugh because the three women, all of us were named Susan. Um, but, you know, I started to see that the world wasn't like it was when I first started my job. It was not like all these women in leadership roles. It was very few women in leadership roles and very few women of different um, ethnicities in leadership roles. Like I was really lucky when I, my first job out of college, you know, my, my first boss, she was Kathy Lee. She was Asian. And I just thought, gosh, this, you know, like, this is such a wonderful world. Like I, you know, this is like what I thought it would be like. And then I quickly learned that it, the world really wasn't like that. <laughs> it was like totally different than that. Yeah. So, so then what then shaped you to be really passionate about culture and engagement? Because some people could get a little bit um, distraught about that where you come in, you're optimistic, then you're like, Oh no, actually most of the people are, white men and that's just how it is. So what kind of uh, spurred you to greatness rather than had you get just kind of down and frustrated? Well, you know, I think those are the types of things that excite me, right? As I just saw that as an opportunity instead of something to get discouraged about, it was an opportunity to see what could we do, right? How can we see more women, more women of color in different roles. And, and, you know, that got me much more involved in our employee resource groups at Oracle to, to see what we could do to build leadership, you know, because especially coming from an Asian background, a lot of times, you know, we're told, you know, oh, you know, your work will, will you know, you don't, you shouldn't brag about yourself. You shouldn't, um, you know, all your work, you know, hard work, work will show up in, in what you do. You don't need to talk about it. You know, this whole shameless self-promotion, you know, that's really frowned upon, right, uh, in, in a lot of Asian cultures, right? It was really, you know, be humble, be quiet. Um, and we really, you know, with our Asian leadership organization here at, at Oracle, we really wanted to um, change that with our women leaders, as well as all the Asians, not not just women, but Asians in general, right, that, that you need to speak up and that you need to talk about your uh, value and what you bring to the table. And you need to to talk about your contributions and your accomplishments because there isn't anybody else out there that is really, you know, advocating for you. You need to be your best advocate. I mean, you might have some great, I had, I've had some great advocates, leader sponsors, whatever you want to call them, uh, mentors here at Oracle. But at the end of the day, you're your best advocate. You're the one that can talk about 
what you can do and what you can bring to the table. And, um, you know, so I think it's important for everybody to kind of build that skill of speaking up and advocating for themselves. Yes, 100%. And I really like to highlight something that you said that's so important is that, you know, we're especially like women, especially um, women, like you mentioned from not just your like culture, but a lot of different cultures, there's cultural indoctrinations that we've been told and we've witnessed, right? We've witnessed with um, our mothers and with the women in our lives. And so it, it takes practice to not just hear and understand that, but to do it. And so sometimes it really helps within these groups to have, you know, pods, in other words, these safe spaces where mm -hmm. they break out and say, I'm really, I love doing this. It's my dream to do that. Myself or my team has accomplished this because I think it's kind of retraining by doing. Yeah. And so I love that you, you know, that you brought that up. And so, you know, a lot of times people might look at you with your role as, you know, VP and think that you were just born into the world, you know, as a VP and assume either that or was smooth sailing. But was there ever, ever a time when you either doubted yourself or um, things got a little challenging, but you persevered anyway? Can you, would you mind sharing a story? I doubt myself all the time. So, you know, how I got this role and, and, and that's why, and I'll share why I doubt myself is, um, we had a change in our go to market a few years ago and i was i was doing special projects at the time and and i was asked to do a special project to help with the change or, or the communications for this whole change and go to market and one of the sales leaders at the time after we had this whole change was left without someone to help him support support him on the communication side so he asked if i would be interested to help him on the communication side and and i thought no I, i'm not really interested in doing communications and he said, well, what would you be interested in doing? And I said, well, let me think about it and I'll get back to you. And I went back and I thought, you know, one of the special projects I had done was working with our transformation of our solution engineering group. And one of the things we had done was around employee engagement because we had a huge attrition problem with our solution engineers. And I thought, gosh, I really enjoyed that. That was really a lot of fun to do this stuff around employee engagement, finding ways to, to get our employees engaged, get them excited that it's, you know, what we want to keep, you know, sometimes it's not always compensation that keeps an employee at a company. It could be some of the extra perks, right? Like we were just talking earlier about returning back to the office, right? We're not forcing people back to the office. That's a nice perk not to have to go to an office if you don't want to go to an office. Um, you know, so there's, you know, other benefits, right? So, so what I um, did a bunch of research and, and uh, put together a proposal that said, you know, what I would love to do is something around customer and employee engagement and, you know, how, you know, if we can get our employees really excited about what we're doing here and get them engaged and really passionate about being part of Oracle, it will translate in how they engage with their customers and what they do with their customers. And he said, oh, that sounds great, but you have to do communications too. Um, and so, that's how I ended up with the job that I had. And then just recently we, we've split that off and now I'm focused on culture and employee engagement. But um, but that's how I ended up with what I had was I pitched this idea uh, and really I have no experience in this area, um, but it was an area that I was really passionate about because I really, you know, I had done some work with the employee resource groups. Um, I had done this, this task force um, prior to this and it was something I was just really excited about. But, you know, you talked about, you know, doubting myself, you know, we have a, you know, I'm in the line of business and a lot of companies, when you look at culture and engagement, that's usually an HR function and I'm not in HR and we've got some great, great re HR resources from talent development to our HR business partners. And I partner with them all day long and, you know, they've got great knowledge to bring to this area, you know, where they lack is, is sometimes their ability to create a program and execute. And that's where my strength is, is really you know, packaging up programs and executing and delivering on programs. So we partner really well together. Um, but I think, you know, sometimes I do doubt myself, right? Because I come up with some ideas and then I'm thinking, you know, is that really solving the right problem? And, you know, but fortunately I have a, you know, I, I meet with my, my HR and my OTD folks on a weekly basis and bounce the ideas around with them to make sure. Um, and I do a lot of reading and I listen to podcasts and 
folks like yourself to kind of learn some best practices and things, because I think um, I'm constantly learning in this job because it's not a job that I, you know, I have an education. I have a, you know, a master's in finance, an undergrad in, in one in journalism, one in marketing, but, you know, nothing in the HR realm. Um, it's just something that I was just really excited about. So I really wanted to spotlight again, something that you said that was super important. And that is like uh, something that you're passionate about that you're good at, because usually if we're passionate about something, we're pretty good at it, but that you didn't have any experience in, but you just went for it. So for um, anybody watching this, especially not to kind of call all of us women out all at once, we're typically not that great at doing this. We're box checkers. So in other words, typically having to check, let's say, according to McKinsey, eight out of 10 boxes when our male counterparts will throw their hat in the arena with three. So um, I think following Susan's lead on this, and if there's something that you're passionate about that maybe you don't have experience, you don't have the education or what have you, to just go for it. And uh, before we came on live, we were talking about this story, and you're also talking about, you know, you got the green flag to do it, but there's a little pushback as far as how it was gonna get done. So can you share a little bit about that and then how it all ended up for you? Yeah, so what I was sharing was that, um, so we you know, agreed that I would come over and do this role. And um, because it was something that we hadn't really had anybody doing at Oracle before, um, and I was the senior director in my current role, and they said, well, we'd like to have you come over um, laterally because it's, it's an undefined job. You haven't done it before. You need to prove it out. Um, you know, so we just want you to come over laterally, no increase or anything, just, um, just with that, you know, come over and, and, uh, do the job. And I just paused and I said, no, I'm not interested in doing that. Um, you know, I've been here for 20 years. I think I've proved myself out enough. Um, and I actually had this experience probably maybe five years prior in my career where it was a similar role that, that the VP at the time said, you know, we need you to prove it out. And, and, you know, I busted my butt and proved it out. And then we had an org change and I didn't get the promotion. So I thought, I'm not doing that again, right? I'm not going to go through and, and prove, bust my butt, prove it out, and then um, have a, a change in organization, not get the promotion. And then of course, I think they brought someone else, you know, they brought a male in and, and promoted him pretty quickly on the last role. But anyway, so, so this time around, I'm like, I'm not doing that again. And I told them that I'm, I, I'm not, you know, I've proven myself 20 years here at Oracle. I'm not going to prove myself out. I, I think that, you know, I've created a brand of, of being able to execute. I think that um, that should, you know, my reputation per, should proceed itself. Um, I'm not taking, I'm taking a big risk, right? By taking this jump into a, you know, creating this new function and, and um, moving into this organization versus staying in my comfy job of what I had, right? And so I just said, no, I'm not interested in, in proving it out. You know, I, I'd like the promotion and the, the increase in compensation, or I'll just stay where I'm at. And I had a great executive vice president um, that really um, went to bat for me and got uh, HR to, to make the change. Wow, take a bow. So I think that is- I encourage everyone to do it, fight for yourself. So so that is a perfect segue into the importance of speaking up and being your own advocate because it is, you know, it's also another, and I wish I knew the exact statistics, but a very large number of women tend to accept a salary that's offered to them and not challenge it, you know, for a new role whereas men tend to challenge a little bit more. So I think the message here is to really own your worth and understand your value. So, um, and understand too how it's a win-win, you know, not just it's something that you deserve, which obviously in this case, it was definitely something that you deserve. But I also want to talk a moment about it really was a win-win. It's not it wasn't all about, I've been here 20 years, I've proven myself, I deserve this. I mean, that was an important part of it. But, you know, in the role with the title, it really was a, um, a win-win because it was going to allow you to really optimize the role for yourself and for your organization. So can you also elaborate a little bit on how it helped Oracle and your team? Because I think that's a really important thing to articulate when we are speaking up and you know advocating 
for ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when I put the plan together and made the proposal to um, the executive VP, you know, I put together a plan of what I thought we needed to do based on on the information that I had and how I could help the organization, right? I looked at some of the information in terms of our early career folks and, and the attrition we were having with early career folks because we bring them in t- into a sales role and sometimes they don't want to do sales. So how do we let them build their network outside of sales to be able to explore other opportunities while they're still here at Oracle so that we keep them here at Oracle because we made a huge investment in them. Um, so I created a program called Talent Exchange, which allows them to kind of do an internal internship with other groups within Oracle to build their network as well as build their skill sets in different areas like marketing or finance or or development, wherever they're, you know, some of them graduate with degrees in UX design and they want to try that out, right? So it gives them an opportunity to try different things. So I've created programs that have enabled us to retain our employees, um, help them grow with their careers here at Oracle. And that was what I had um, put in, in what my objectives were when I proposed the pro, you know, my job, right? It was, I had a proposal that said, here's what I think we could do. Here's the things that I think we can impact. And that's what I continue to deliver on. So oh, yeah, that is just so, so important. So thank you so much for sharing that. And then is there one thing if, you know, for everybody watching, is there a call to action, like make sure you do this or make sure you remember this, or is there anything you'd like to leave everyone with, leave everyone with who's watching so they can maybe, you know, speak up a little more, be a bigger advocate for their for themselves and have a bigger impact for themselves and their organization? Well, what I always tell folks is that when you think about your career, think of it as a job. And when I say job, what I mean is look for what brings you joy. Look for opportunities to build your skill set and know what brand it is that you want to be known for. So like for me, you know, I've had a lot of different jobs in my career. I started my career in finance and then I moved to accounting and then I realized that they really frown on creativity and finance, well, actually more in accounting. And I said, I don't look that great in yellow jumpsuits or orange jumpsuits. So I should probably change. You know, my undergrad was marketing. I really wanted to move into marketing, um, but I didn't really have, you know, I I graduated with my master's in finance and moved immediately into a finance role. And I didn't have um, a lot of marketing experience and I wanted to move into marketing. So I did a lot of volunteer stuff. I volunteered for our United Way campaign and, and had the opportunity to kind of use some of that skill set to, to parlay into a, a job at, at market in marketing. And then, um, you know, then I, once I moved out of marketing and I moved into more of an operations function, I kind of missed the opportunity to engage with customers. And so I got more involved with our employee resource groups and and partnerships with organizations like Athena here in San Diego and with um, Ascend for the um, professional Asian communities, right? And that enabled me to kind of build my network outside of Oracle. So that created other opportunities for me. And then the brand that, um, you know, just know what brand it is that you want to be known for that that people know you for. And mine is really, you know, to run a program and to be able to execute. So I can translate that from whether it's running a sales program to running an employee program or running a, a marketing program. You know, I can put a program together and I can execute on the program. Um, you know, so I think that's the important thing is, you know, treat your career like a job know what brings you joy when you're no longer finding joy, look for opportunities to kind of build on the skill set and, and, um, you know, volunteer, raise your hand often. That's what I always tell people is raise your hand often for special projects, even if they're outside your comfort zone, because that's where you'll grow and that's where you'll build your network and build uh, your reputation that, that you can do more than what you're currently doing. Yeah. So, so important. And, um, you know, I want to also piggyback on something that you said that's so important. And you're like, you said to just, you know, know your brand, know what you're good at, know what you love, but you also have to talk about it because if you're amazing at putting programs together, it's really important to be as prolific as you can about, Oh, I'm so excited at this, you know, and then we launched it and it went bananas. It did this. And then, you know, it was over here. And I mean, just talking about it, um, is just so important because then you'll be not just clear on it, but then you'll be top of mind. So when something comes up and they're like, oh, we need to build out this program and make sure it's executed. You're like, oh, Susan, 
that no one's going to know um, if we don't talk about it. So what you said is so important. And I would just like to encourage everyone who's listening to think about where your passion meets your area of expertise and to be even more vocal. And like the title of this today, to speak up and advocate for yourself even more. Susan, thank you so much for your time today. There was so much wisdom shared. I look forward to continuing to follow your journey at Oracle and beyond. Thank you so very much. It was a pleasure.